Hi there. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. So today I've got one of the more interesting uh, American uh, carrier naval aircraft, uh, the Curtis Helldiver, which of course won its spurs in places like the Battle of Midway and in the case of the artwork on the front of this one from Matchbox, uh, it's the Battle of Rabaul. So let's take a closer look at this one. I have to say that I didn't um, I didn't get this the first time round. Um, I did see the kit, but I don't. Perhaps it wasn't as desirable to me as some of the others, like the Jaguars and the Corsairs and the Buccaneers and things. I don't know. But anyway, I managed to get my hands on a nice example here a couple of years ago. So let's take a look. So typical Matchbox orange range. Um, wonderful artwork on the front from Roy Huxley yet again. Um, it actually says here. If we take a look at the actual, uh, quite a big battle going on there. There's um, looks like it's a Japanese carrier that's on fire in the background, and it says here, uh, in the first com, oops, come out for you a bit, in their first combat operation with the Hell Diver aircraft of VB-17 from the USS Bunker Hill attacked the Japanese base at Rabaul on the 11th of November 1943. Uh, looks like they're causing absolute mayhem there. So. This one is PK-104, true to form it's got the um, artwork on the top showing what it looks like if you don't use any paint, so no painting is necessary. And then on the rear, as usual, we've got a nice clean uh, window box, uh, it's a, one of the original ones, This it's from 1973, so it's from the first issue. So that's a really nice desirable one to have got my hands on, I've got to say. And we've got options of the USS Bunker Hill as depicted on the cover. And also from the USS Yorktown, May 1943, uh, which was for the Battle of Midway, I think. So, let's take a look inside. Oh, of course on the other side, sorry, I almost forgot. We've got adverts for the other products as usual. We've got the Walrus, we've got the... Uh, Bristol Bowfighter and the American Corsair 2. Now then, it says here on the end of the box, just worth having a look, look at this, somebody's written £1.25 September 80. So obviously that's the price it was at the time. Uh, let's have a look what we've got inside. Bring me out for this. Okay. Oops. Oh, still more to come. A little bit of the stand, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay, so we've got bits of stand here separately. Uh, typical matchbox clear stand that we all like. Uh, everybody's been debating on the end of these videos with the comments saying, yeah, I've noticed that you all feel the same way about stands. I don't know why we can't have those back. Uh, stupid that modern manufacturers don't offer you any option to put the plane in flight really. So here we've got the clear parts and to be honest it looks really nice. Um, it's got quite a lot of uh, canopy framing as the Hell Diver. Uh, obviously it's two-man crew. Uh, we've got a rear gunner and we have um, his navigator as well I think. And then we've got the pilot at the front. That looks pretty cool. Very clean looking. Excellent. Then we've got some decals. Uh, the usual, unfortunately, the matchbox decals are actually very good quality. What's not such good quality is their uh, tissue that they put on them, which always goes a bit horrible and, I don't know, greasy somewhere. So here we've got the actual decals themselves, which uh, the backing paper again looks a bit yellow, but the decals themselves look quite bright. They look fine. Then it's time for the instructions. Let's see what we have here. So you can tell it's the genuine original because it's got the original orange range orange instruction leaflet. And it says in 1938 the US Bureau of Aeronautics had a requirement for a new dive bomber, including the spe specification was a new radial engine and a retracting undercarriage. Curtis and Brewster submitted his designs and subject to the usual tests. Almost at once this design was found to be excessively heavy and this was a major difficulty throughout its development. After a, de after a prototype broke up in the air, serious doubts were expressed as to its future. Oh dear. 
However, after an intense program of troubleshooting and modifications, it later overcame most of the development troubles and saw considerable service becoming a very successful combat machine. Well, we know it's sunk a lot of Jap carriers at Midway, don't we? Anyway, let's have a look. So, on the back we've got our little small parts painting guide, the usual things, rest of hook, uh, the wheels and tyres, the bomb, pilot, pilot seat, um, tail, uh, tail wheel, the propeller, uh, I'm not sure what that is actually, I'm not sure what that part is, uh, machine gun obviously, and then the exhausts and the inside of the cowling of the engine. Uh, not very well printed this one, I've got to say it's quite faint, it's like it's been, um, it's like it was at the end of the run before the ink was changed on the printing press, <laughs> which used to happen in those days. Um, yeah, I've been involved with printing most of my life and I know that all this sort of thing used to go on. Nowadays it's all computer controlled of course. So consequently it's a little bit hard to read but it's just the basic call outs for the Humbrol enamels. On the main instructions themselves, we've got the pilot and his seat going in. And the navigator sits on what looks like a little bench at the back. Doesn't look very comfortable, does it, really? <laughs> anyway, uh, then you're building up the wings. And it's in... Uh, they, they've actually got folding wings, which is cool, on the model. So you can actually fold them up. So that is cool. It's got a little, uh, a little pivot on the wing here. But don't glue. Do not glue. So they'll fold up. That's, that's great to give it some animation. And then we've got... Building up your engine, radial engine there, and your cowling, putting your prop in, and your spinner. Bringing that together with the fuselage, and popping your wings in. In fact, it's all coming together, isn't it, there? Machine gun. Oh, right, that's the base of the machine gun mount that we couldn't identify before. That's what that part is. Tailplane's going in, canopy goes on, off we go. And then, toward the end, we've got some stores and weapons, so we've got... Aerials going in, we've got the undercarriage going in, bombs under the wings, uh, and tanks. Either or. Either or. They've got tanks or bombs. Depends on the range, doesn't it, I suppose. Um, and then there's no bomb in the middle. It's actually, it's actually like um, uh, a bomb bay, but it's got like a, a hook that, that flings it out, which is quite unusual, actually, isn't it? Uh, you can see it here in the artwork. It's like a um, cradle, but it pops out the cradle, does it? It's not on the outside. So that's to keep the aerodynamics good, I suppose. And that's how it delivers the bomb. And if you want to have your wheels retracted, then that's how you do it. You just put them straight up, but they're still visible. So there we go. Looks nice. Let's have a look at the actual parts. It's quite a sort of a stubby aircraft. It's, um, yeah, interesting. It's got, it's got that, yeah, that Brewster look about it. They mentioned it was a corporation with the Brewster Aircraft Company and their planes are always stubby, like the Buffalo. Well, it looks really nice. Um, the only complaint I would have on this, it's raised panel lines, this one. It's not, it's not uh, engraved panel lines. Definitely raised, so that's a little bit... Mm, not sure about that. Don't think that's quite right, but that was definitely... A lot of them were done that way. And then you've got um, engraved panel lines uh, on the wings, so that, that's different. That's curious, isn't it? Mixture. Don't often get that, in fairness. Let's see what the other one's like. This is the wing sprue with the tails. Uh, and they're engraved panel lines again, so recessed panel lines, not, not sticking up. Oh no, well they are on the tail planes. So recessed on the wings, here, but raised panel lines on the tails. Is that how it was on the real aircraft? I'm not sure. Doubtful. Doubtful. And we've got the two pilots here. As you can see. And the cowling, which is quite nice. I like the blue. Very cool. Uh, we've got our gear doors there. It's definitely raised. Very, very raised, isn't it? It's quite noticeably raised panel lining here. You can feel it quite a lot. Nice sprue though, very clean, no, no flash on it anywhere. And then we've got an unusual sprue actually. This is um, this is a metal like a metallic silver. It's not grey, it's actually like a silver metallic finish, which is quite nice actually. So we've got radial engine 
here, the seat, and obviously we've got the spinner, and then we've got the option of the bombs, or the tanks, and the gear here, machine gun here, aerials, etc., bomb racks, and last but not least, the arrestor hook, and it is quite a good hook, isn't it? Very cool. Yes, I like that hook. <laughs> so there we have it. I like, I like the finish on that. I'm quite impressed with that. Um, yeah, I'm just not too sure about the, the raised panel lines. So I'm a bit doubtful that's correct. I think that somebody's... It's like it's been designed by two different people. Really, and, uh, one's, one wants recessed panel lines and the other one wants to do raised. <laughs> but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Lovely artwork though. Nice kit. Um, and you know, not something that you you would necessarily expect uh, as a subject for someone like Matchbox, but I'm glad they did it because it, it looks very good. I bet it would build lovely. And if you want to get one of these, tricky, but get the Revel one. You can always get the Revel one that's one colour, and it's about nine ten pound, I think. Um, I'm sure they're still doing it. Shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, I think that's probably a nine out of ten for me. Eight and a half, nine out of ten. Thumbs up. Hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Please like the video if you thought it was interesting and share and subscribe and don't forget to ding the notification bell because we'll be having quite a few more of these uh, Matchbox in particular reviews coming up uh, and uh, you don't want to miss them so you'll get a notification pop up in your inbox. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. I uh, really appreciate your company. Please tune in again soon because we'll have lots of more videos of these reviews coming up in the near future. In the meantime, Take care of yourselves. Thanks a lot and bye for now.